Hey guys, welcome back to Learning Magnet, and today we will be talking about physiological processes. Now, this now it may sound like a big word right now, but in the next couple of slides, I'm gonna break it down for you so that's much easier for you to understand it. So, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so something to know uh, is this. Physiological processes include processes like photosynthesis, cell respiration, transpiration, and reproduction. In the next couple of slides, like I said, um, please keep this in the back of your mind because in the next couple of slides, I will be breaking down each of these topics into some basic comprehensible units okay first thing to know is asexual reproduction in plants in asexual reproduction it is basically the creation of a new offspring okay and it may be asexual meaning there's vegetative propagation happening and an example of that would be like creating like new plants from cuttings all right and in asexual reproduction, it's when the offspring is identical to the parents. It's almost like a, it's basically a clone of the parent. And there's only one parent involved. If there, And this is something that this is very confusing for students. Many times students think that asexual reproduction, they confuse that with sexual reproduction. But they're both two different things. Please if you want to learn more, I would definitely recommend you to check out my asexual reproduction video to cover that covers more in-depth information about asexual reproduction. So, again, asexual reproduction is where one parent is involved, there it the offspring is the clone of the parent, and there can be even more than one offspring. It doesn't necessarily have to be just one offspring. Okay, um, or as sexual reproduction, that's where there are two parents that are involved. And um, the offspring, there is diversity in them, meaning they've got half the DNA from the mom or and half the DNA from the dad. Or in this case, it would be like half the DNA from one parent and the other half of the DNA from the other parent. So let's go take a look at what I mean by asexual reproduction because this is something that students get very confused about. So let's say you've got um, some potatoes. Now you may notice that potatoes have these little kind of tubers that they're called. Um, some people call them tubers, others call them roots. Basically, um, uh, they're used to grow more potatoes. So, a potato farmer would most likely, or well, if you're growing a potato at home, this is something that you may want to do. And this is usually how sometimes if you, if many people who do gardening in their yard, this is how they grow these kind of vegetables like the potatoes. What you can do is you can take the potato, um, you can use one of these tubers, and one process that most people often use is this. So what they'll do is they'll stick a stick through it or they'll put two toothpicks on the side and then they'll like um, put this tuber into the water. So they'll get a wasp and in the wasp there will be some water and they'll basically stick the tuber part of it in the water. And so the toothpicks will help the rest of the potato rest on like the neck of the vase. Like this, an example. And over a couple of days or even weeks, um, there will be these kind of roots and all, and when it's big enough to go in the soil, they'll remove it from the water bottle, from the bottle or the waz, and then they'll put it in the soil so that way more potatoes can grow and it has bigger space and room to grow. And that's like a simple way of asexual reproduction. Now, the next thing to know is transpiration. Transpiration is basically the loss of water through the stomata in the atmosphere. What does that mean, first of all? Well, 
First of all, you must know what stomata is. Stomata are basically known as like leaf pores. They're kind of like these tiny microscopic kind of holes on leaves that you may be able to see if you like put them under like a magnifying glass or a microscope, you may s properly see them. So, oops, okay. So, basically what's happening is transpiration is like one of the parts or the steps you may remember from the water cycle. But the water that's in the ground, you know, may remember like the groundwater, or like you know, if you whenever you just pour some water, um, what's gonna happen is the water in the soil, the roots are gonna soak it up or absorb the water. Again, I would recommend you to check out my plant organs video for more in depth, um, information about the stomata, the root hairs, and other plant structures, features, organs, etc. So anyways, they would suck it out or absorb the water and then um, through the stem and the branches it would go to one of the leaves. Once it goes to one of these leaves, well it goes to like all of them basically is what I'm saying, but once it goes it leaves the hole, it leaves the leaf through the holes known as stomata. Those are like the small openings on the underside of the leaves. Um, in the morning, whenever, if you've ever noticed like a leaf like this, you may feel it really wet because of the dew. That's basically transpiration. Um, there's obviously, you may notice some water on it like this picture right here. Obviously you may not see as big as these droplets. Some plants have them others don't but this is what there is many times like if you notice in august many of your yard plants or gardening plants you may notice and like when you wake up early in the morning you may notice that they they feel wet or there's a little drops of water and it feels like as if there's water on it even though it may have not rained how did that happen because of transpiration and that's all basically transpiration is Okay, photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is basically the process of using carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight to make glucose and oxygen. Basically what plants usually do is when you provide them with some water, carbon dioxide, which is in the air, and some sunlight, they will use those three ingredients to make their make sugars such as glucose and oxygen. Oxygen is obviously not a sugar, but you know what I mean. Um, and when I'm talking about sugar, I'm not talking about your regular sugar that you use, eat in your meals that can be found in churros or in other desserts. I'm talking about the special sugar that plants use as their own food, which is known as glucose. So they make glucose and they'll take that and then they'll release oxygen as a byproduct. It's like a leftover part. They're like, we don't want this oxygen, we're just going to release it in the air. And that's kind of like a good thing because humans use oxygen. They, humans breathe in oxygen and then they um, exhale carbon dioxide. So once the plants release this oxygen, we can breathe that in and we can exhale carbon dioxide, which is really beneficial to the plants. So that is basically the process of photosynthesis. Now cellular respiration is almost like photosynthesis but just completely opposite it is reverse almost so it's basically the process of using that glucose that we um made with photosynthesis using that to make energy so cellular respiration is using that glucose the sugars and using some oxygen to create atp which is an energy and carbon dioxide so usually plants do this kind of process at night which is why um you may have heard to not sleep under a tree or near any sort of plants at night because when they uh, because at night when they perform cellular respiration, they release carbon dioxide and humans are typically 
advised not to bring in carbon dioxide. For us, for humans, oxygen is much more beneficial and the carbon dioxide is kind of like what we exhale out. So again, it's super important to know this process. Now, something you may want to notice is this. You may notice that photosynthesis and cellular respiration are like completely um, almost flipped, reverse opposites, whatever you want to call them, because here, because look, photosynthesis uses sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water, and its products are oxygen and glucose. So where cellular respiration uses oxygen and glucose to create ATP and carbon dioxide. So they're very similar. They've got some similarities. And this is something that the EOC, the ninth grade biology EOC may ask you about. So it's super important that you know these um, terms and you just want to know these processes. So if you do not understand what I'm trying to say, then let me show you. So here again, photosynthesis, they use what plants use, carbon dioxide. And they release oxygen and glucose, right? Whereas in cellular respiration, we're using this oxygen and we're using this glucose to create energy, which is known as ATP, remember? And they're also releasing this carbon dioxide. Right here. So this is again the simple process of what I mean and what I'm trying to point out to you. So again, this is the process of cellular respiration photosynthesis. I specifically dedicated this slide to kind of showing you this relationship because again, this is kind of like making connections, something that is super helpful when you're studying for a test or a quiz because then this will help you much better when scoring. Okay, so I hope you guys liked this video, and if you did, please give this a big thumbs up and subscribe, and let me know in the comments what other videos I should cover. I hope you guys have a great day, and bye!